Hey guys, John from Fly8MikeAlpha.com and today we're going to talk about the basics of weight and balance on board our aircraft. Basically, where are we going to put the pilot and the passengers and all that baggage and fuel to make sure that the aircraft is in equilibrium and within the weight and balance limitations. Let's get to it. Ann Arbor Tower, right turn northbound approved, runway 24 cleared for takeoff. Rear contact, clock zero one. So let's approach weight and balance in terms of basically a seesaw from when you were a kid. Obviously when you had a fat friend, you had a hard time weighing down the other side of the seesaw given that it was the same length. If you wanted to weigh down your side of the seesaw more, you would have to go further away from the pivot point or he would have to come closer to it to have less of an arm or less of an effect over that pivot point. So we're going to put some things up here. First thing is going to be our wings. And that's our pivot point when we're airborne. That's our center of pressure, and we'll talk more about that later. Then on top of that center of pressure, we're going to go ahead and throw our fuselage there. So you can see this rudimentary fuselage, a little bit of a tail there on the right. Then the next thing we're going to do is draw an arbitrary line that the manufacturer chooses. And this line is typically, uh, it's just a reference point, typically the firewall, or basically where the um, engine compartment uh, separates from the cabin compartment. So we're going to draw this red line, we'll call that our datum point, and that's just an arbitrary point chosen by the manufacturer. Everything to the left of that point, forward towards the nose cone, is going to be a negative uh, moment or negative arm. Everything behind it will be a positive arm, and that's what we're going to get into next. So let's say we have a heavy engine sitting out front there, and that engine weighs about 300 pounds, and it's 12 inches in front of the firewall, in front of our datum point. So that's going to be 300 pounds times minus 12 will give us the moment, the weight times the arm equals the moment. Then we can go ahead and say we have a pilot, and he weighs about 100 pounds, and he's sitting 36 inches behind the datum point on the positive side, so it's 100 pounds times 36 inches equals the moment. And you can see that these two moments both cancel out. 3600 from the engine and 3600 from the pilot. One's a negative, one's positive. It equals zero. The aircraft's within balance. And the center of gravity would be zero inches from the datum point. Now let's take another example here and say we have that same 300 pound engine, but we have two pilots this time and they're each 100 pounds. So now we have 200 pounds for our pilots. So 200 pounds times 36 would give us 7,200 inch pounds. And you can see that leaves us when we add all this up with positive 3,600 inch pounds. We then divide our moment by our total weight and we get 7.2. And that 7.2 number means that the center of gravity is 7.2 inches aft of the datum point on the positive side of the datum point so bringing the center of gravity closer towards the wings. Now why is this important? Well, the center of gravity is the point on the aircraft that if you were to pick up the airplane with the, your fingertip, it would balance about that point. So it makes sense that we're trying to make the aircraft balance somewhere in the neighborhood of the wings since it, the air is basically acting as your fingertip holding up the aircraft about the wings as it's flying through the air. And we'll want to have that CG somewhere in front of the center of pressure, slightly in front of the center of the wings. So that's enough theory for one video. Let's go ahead and jump into doing an actual loading problem for a regular old Cessna 172 here. And so we're going to use this loading chart. We can see a sample problem already filled out for us. And we're going to do this two different ways. The first way is going to be using a loading graph that gives us our moments that it's already computed the arm values for us. And then the second way is a little bit more math, but I tend to like it better because you get to see exactly how you're finding those moment numbers and it kind of spells it all out. So we'll look at it the two different ways. First way using our loading graph with the moments. Second way doing a little bit more multiplication and doing it longhand so we can see it ourselves. So for this method of using the loading graph, we're simply going to find our weight, say for example, the weight of our pilot and front passenger, 340 pounds find that line that says pilot and front passenger, follow that line up to 340, 
and then draw a straight line down from that 340 mark and we get our load moment over a thousand pounds inches or a thousand inch pounds however you want to say it basically that's giving you an abbreviated moment and so that's where they get their 12.6 from now for fuel same thing 210 pounds of fuel on up the line draw a line down and you get 10.1 so you can see how this method works and at the end of it all you have to do is then come over here to your moment envelope and you can simply plot the total moment and your total weight and find out whether or not you're within the envelope. Now if you're wondering about this whole normal category versus utility category in the graph, what that's ultimately telling you is that if you want to operate your aircraft within the utility category where it's approved for possibly some more maneuvers and a higher load factor, higher g-loading, then you're going to have to be below a certain weight and within a certain CG limit more so than if you were in the normal category. So say if you're going out to maybe do spins and the aircraft was approved for that in the utility category but not approved to do spins in the normal category, then you would have to be at a lower weight and also within this CG limitation. So now we can go ahead and use our loading arrangements page to do it the harder way, basically where we're going to multiply the weight times the arm to find our moment and then go ahead and divide all that. So slightly more math, I actually prefer this way. I don't think it's harder. I think I get to see all of the math myself and I make sure I'm getting the exact numbers. So we can see here, they give us a range for the pilot and front passenger, 34 to 46. We're gonna use the average, which is 37. Rear passengers, they give us the number 73. So these are all pre-measured distances. We don't actually have to go out to the aircraft with the tape measure and measure from the firewall or from the datum point back to the station where we're putting the weight. Now note, obviously passengers can lean forward and backwards, pilot and passenger seats can move forward and backwards. These are rough estimates. These are not perfect numbers and that's why it's so important to be within the envelope when you're operating the aircraft, not already pushing the envelope when you have not vague numbers, but not perfect numbers either. So now we're going to go ahead and make our little handwritten chart here with our weight, our arm, and then that'll equal our moment. And so we can start with pilot and front passenger. We're going to use 150 pounds for our pilot, 150 pounds for our passenger. Going to multiply that by 37 to get our moment. Then we can do the same for our rear passengers. We'll say we just have one person flying with us and keep it simple. They're 180 pounds. And so we're going to multiply that by 73. We could go ahead and plug in our known empty weight as well and the known arm for the empty weight. And we'll find that in the POH or AFM uh, gets changed from time to time and updated in the aircraft maintenance logs. And we'll calculate that out to be 62,600 inch pounds for our moment. We also need some fuel to make the engine run. And we'll just say we have, say, 20 gallons of fuel on board. That gives 120 pounds times our arm, gives us our moment. We'll add up our moments. We'll add up our total weights. We'll divide the total moment by the total weight. And that gives us our CG number. So we'll go ahead and draw a horizontal line over from our total weight. We'll draw a vertical line up from our CG location. And where those two lines intersect is where we are located on our CG loading envelope. And we can see that we're slightly outside of the utility category, but we're well within the normal category. So we're safe to go fly. We're under our maximum takeoff weight. We're in between our CG maximum forward or aft location. We can't do those maneuvers that are restricted only to utility category operations because we don't qualify for that today with our current loading. But we can do everything that we want to do in the normal category. You know, that applies to our aircraft. So we'll have good pitch authority up and down. We'll have good aircraft performance because we're under our maximum takeoff weight and we're good to go fly. We've seen it two different ways here. Either way works. You're going to get the same answer, the same yay or nay answer as to whether or not you can go fly the airplane at that weight with that CG loading. If any of this doesn't quite make sense, just leave your questions in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks so much for watching and we hope you get to fly every day. If not, then fly See y'all next time.